Hi, good day. This is your web teacher, Teacher Jeans. Welcome to our class of Fundamentals of Accountancy, Business, and Management 2. We will discuss our first topic for this week, Statement of Financial Position. The end of this lesson, you are expected to be able to describe the elements of the Statement of Financial Position. To classify the elements of Statement of Financial Position into current and non-current items, to prepare the Statement of Financial Position of a single proprietorship, and to prepare a Statement of Financial Position using the report form and the account form with proper classification of items as current or non-current. So this topic has been discussed in your 5M1 subject, but this time, we will discuss this in a more detailed way. So statement of financial position is also known as balance sheet and it presents the financial position of an entity at a given date. So this date means that this statement should be stated as at or as of the end of the period. So this balance sheet um, helps users of financial statements to assess the financial health or soundness of the company or the business. So when analyzed over several accounting periods, these balance sheets may assist in identifying underlying trends in the financial position of the firm. And this is very helpful, no, particularly in determining the state of the entity's liquidity risk, the financial risk, its credit risk, and of course, its business risk. So, when used in conjunction with other financial statements of the entity and the financial statement of its competitors, balance sheet may help to identify relationships and trends which are um, indicative of potential problems or areas for further improvement. And another one is the analysis of this statement could um, therefore assist the users of financial statements to predict the amount, timing, and volatility of entities' future earnings. of financial position consists of the following components or elements. We have assets, liabilities, and equity. So the assets of an entity may be financed from internal sources like share capital and profits. So and also from external credit like um, trade creditors, bank loans. So since the total assets of a business must be equal to liabilities and equity. So this leads to the accounting equation assets equals liabilities plus equity. So assets are something that an entity owns or controls in order to derive economic benefits from its use. And liabilities, so these are obligations that a business owes to someone. And its settlement involves cash, no? the transfer of cash or other resources. And the last one, we have equity. So this is what the business owes to its owners. So it's derived from deducting the total liabilities from the total assets. So it therefore represents the residual interest in the business that belongs to the owners. So here, the basic account equation, we have assets plus liabilities equals equity. So this is very important. So here, again, something that an entity owns or controls in order to derive economic benefits from its use. So it can be classified as current or non-current assets. So assets must be classified in the balance sheet or in the statement of financial position as current or non-current assets. So um, current assets, these are assets that are expected to realize, not to be realized within one year from the reporting date. And these non-current assets are long-term assets that a company expects to hold over one fiscal year. So if it is six months or less than a year or within a year, 
So that can be considered as current assets. And if it is more than one year, that is labeled as non-current assets. So cash, examples of current assets. Number one example of this is cash. So cash is considered a current asset because it can be readily converted within one year and can be used to pay short-term obligations. And cash includes bills and coins in hand, bank accounts, and operating funds. For example, bills and coins inside a restaurant's cash register are included in the company's cash account. Also, cash deposited in banks under the company's name are also classified as cash unless they are restricted. So finally, operating and working funds here are also classified as cash. Another example is cash equivalent. So this is short-term, highly liquid investments that are readily convertible to known amounts of cash and which are subject to an insignificant risk of changes in value. So um, this has been defined no, by the IAS7, the Statement of Cash Flows, IASB. And also this term short-term, the term short-term here, so this is subject to the entity's policy and ordinarily the instruments that acquired 90 days before the year um, before the maturity are classified as cash equivalent so to sum up the bills and coins on hand plus bank accounts plus operating funds are considered as cash and this one, cash equivalents, are those um, instruments that acquired 90 days before their maturity. So another, we have accounts receivables. So these are amounts owed by the customers to the entity. So ordinarily, entities sell on credit over cash. So the entity records a trade accounts receivables or accounts receivables while waiting for the collection of cash on due date. So these um, receivables are called open accounts since they do not have documentary support other than the sales contract. And another one we have notes receivables. So these are evidenced by a promissory note. So there are three key elements of notes receivable so remember this first is a principal amount of the amount collectible by the entity from the customer second notes receivable would have maturity dates which can be for 30 60 or 90 days upon the date of issue and lastly it must have a corresponding interest like six percent or seven percent and interest receivables so um these are collectible amounts due to the cost of borrowing money so these are related to the notes receivable no from the previous example and this in the interest of this is computed as principal multiplied by interest rate and multiplied by the related time factor and another one we have trading securities so these securities that have been purchased by a company for the purposes of realizing a short-term profit another term for this is what we call the FAF VPL or the financial assets at fair value true through profit of loss so this means that the entity must carry these instruments with short-term profit-taking motives like due to changes in um, market price. And of course, inventories. So these are merchandise held for resale. So the International Accounting, Accounting Standard Board. So it includes the following items as part of inventories. First, you have the um, goods for resale in the normal course of business. So they are conventionally called finished goods so these are part of inventories so for example um 
A real estate company selling land will classify their land as inventories as such are held for resale no are held for sale in the normal course of business so on the other hand assume that a manufacturing entity owns a piece of land where its manufacturing plant stands so this land will not be classified as inventory since such is not held for sale so those um, considered only for held for resale and second inventories include goods in the process of production so these are conventionally called as work in progress or goods in process and lastly inventories include materials and supplies to be consumed in the production process so these are conventionally called raw materials for example a beverage company producing bottled orange juice will include fresh oranges and concentrates as the raw material so it could be part of the inventories and supplies and other prepaid assets so this include office supplies to be consumed by the business and prepaid assets so a common example of prepaid assets is prepaid rent so that one so first example for the non-current assets we have property plant and equipment so these assets include fixed assets that are used in the normal operating cycle or production of the business and these assets also include land and buildings being used by the company the manufacturing plants manufacturing equipment vehicles furnitures and fixtures and leasehold improvements are also included in this category so as long-lived assets property plant and equipment or ppe are depreciated over their estimated useful life so however land is not depreciated since um it is deemed with perpetual benefit and PPE, this property plan and equipment, are presented in the statement of financial position after deducting the related accumulated depreciation. Next, we have intangible assets. So, these are assets um, meeting the definition of asset but without physical substance. So, common intangible assets include trademarks. Um, so we have trademarks for brand names, um, patents for inventions, and copyrights for artistic or literary works. So intangible assets with definite useful lives are amortized over their useful lives. And those with indefinite useful lives, however, are annually tested for impairment. So for PPE, you have depreciation. For intangible assets, you have what? You have amortization. So, next. So, another one, we have investment property. So, these are long-lived assets. Not, remember this one, not used in production. So, the company's intention for these assets is to lease out or for long-term capital appreciation. So, for example, um, we have this Lopez company that purchases a land and erects a building in the said land for its corporate headquarters. So such is classified as property plant and equipment because the property is to be used by the entity. But if that Lopez company purchases the same property and erects a building to be leased out to renters, then it is called an investment property. Why? Because this property will be used to generate rental income and not for company use. Next, we have another example for non-current assets. It's a bio biological asset. So, these are living plants or animals held by the business for resale or for breeding. So, these assets include um, trees and plantations, plants, dairy cattle, pigs, um, bushes figs and fruit trees so the next component we have liabilities so these are obligations that a business owes 
to someone. So this um, this is a present obligation arising from past events. So the settlement of which is expected to result in an outflow from the entity of resources embodying economic benefits or from the assets. So again, these are present obligations arising from, from past events and can be classified as current or non-current liability. So if we have current assets and non-current assets, we also have current liabilities and non-current liabilities. So current liabilities are those that the company expects to settle within 12 months of the date on the balance sheet. So um, the settlement comes either from the use of current assets such as cash on hand or from the current sale of inventory. Settlement can also come from swapping out one current liability for another. So at present, so most liabilities show up on the balance sheet at historic cost rather than fair value. So there is no generally accepted accounting principle or what we call GAAP requirement for the order in which they show up on the balance sheet as long as they are properly classified as current. So example of current liabilities, we have accounts payable, notes payable, and earned income, wages payable, and taxes payable. So the next one, we have non-current liabilities. So of these are um, the ones the company reckons and are not going anywhere soon. So in other words, the company doesn't expect to liquidate them within 12 months of the balance sheet date. So examples are long-term bank loan, bonds payable, and mortgage payable. So again, some examples of current liabilities, we have accounts payable so or trade accounts payable. So these are open accounts relating to purchase of goods or raw materials. So if the seller has accounts receivable for uncollected accounts, then the buyer will have accounts payables for unpaid amounts. Next one, we have notes payable. So unlike trade accounts payable, um, notes payable are evidenced by a promissory note. So if a seller receives a note receivable, then the buyer then issues a note payable. So as in the notes receivable, um, notes payable would have a principal amount maturity date and interest rate another example we have interest payable so interest payable are related to the notes payable so interests are considered as cost for borrowing money so interest are computed as principal amount multiplied by time factor and interest rate so another one we have other accrued expenses so what are these these accounts pertain to expenses incurred but not yet paid. So common examples of these accrued expenses are salaries, rent, and utilities. We have here our last example for current liabilities. There are more, but we will have a limited examples for this lesson. So income tax payable. So Business organizations tax liability to the government where it operates. So, um, income taxes are normally paid on the 5th of April of the succeeding year. So, you can also check my other video for this for the introduction for FabM2. So, before we proceed to this one, so again, another exam, um, we also have done current liabilities. So, I forgot to put it in the slide, but um, as I have mentioned, the examples for this are the long-term bank loan, loans um, payable, bonds payable, mortgage payable. So this topic, no, the statement of financial transition, um, is also interconnected with your business finance, your accounting one subject, and for the your entrep, even in in your entrep in your organization and management. So this one. For categories of equity in the last portion of your balance sheet, so for sole proprietorship, you use owner's equity and that is net of withdrawal. And for partnership, you use partner's equity, net of partner's withdrawal and share in net income or 
net loss. And for corporation, you use stockholders equity. So actually for corporation, you have their share capital that represents the amount invested by the owners in the entity. You also have retained earnings that comprises the not total net profit or loss retained in the business after distribution to the owners in the form of dividends. And of course, you also have revaluation reserve contains the net surplus of any upward revaluation of property, plant and equipment that is recognized directly in equity. So let's move to the preparation in preparing a simple statement of financial position or balance sheet. So first, you have to start with the heading. Second, you have to present the assets. Third one, you have to present the liabilities. In the last one, you have to add the owner's equity. Again, owner's equity if sole proprietorship since we will only um, be discussing the single proprietorship statement of financial position. So we will use owner's equity. So step one, start with the heading. So um, the heading includes, sorry for this, the heading includes the name of entity individual or company name of the statement so we have statement of financial position and the reporting period so for example we have december 31 2021 so some complex forms of business may include a more detailed heading like when reporting a consolidated balance sheet and or when presenting comparative years so the next slide is an example of a simple heading in the balance sheet that is stated in the local currency. So this is the example of a simple heading. So you have there the name of the individual, um, the title, statement, financial position, and of course the date. Step two, you have to present the assets. So classify the assets into current and non-current assets. So again, current assets are cash, cash equivalents, assets held for collection, sale, or consumption within the entity's normal operating cycle. And assets um, could also, assets that are held for trading within the next 12 months. So the rest are considered non-current assets. So example, um, again, you're heading the name of the entity or the individual, the title, the date. Then you have to present the asset portion so current and non-current assets so here and you have to you have the total assets current plus non-current so again as i have mentioned um non-current assets the ppe um what will you show in the balance sheet is the net the net of the depreciated amount so delivery equipment for 50,000 less accumulated depreciation because it depreciates. So the third step, you have to present the liabilities. So after presenting the total assets, next are the liabilities. So you should also classify you know, the liabilities as to current or non-current. So after presenting the assets, current assets and non-current assets, and also the liabilities, we have current liabilities and then current liabilities and you have their total liabilities so the statement of financial position looks like this and the last step you have to add the owner's equity so the statement of financial position is an equation of assets equals liabilities plus equity so there is need to add the owner's equity the liabilities and equity section of the statement of the financial position so here, this is the example. I hope you can see it clearly. So here, assets. So first step, you have the title, the heading, the assets, the liabilities, and the owner's equity. So there is a need to, again, to add this owner's equity in this liability and equity section. This is uh, this one. This one is the liability and owner's equity section. 
So, the owner's equity presented may only show the ending balance. So, this one. So, um, that is the ending balance amount shown in the statement of changes in owner's equity. So, this amount is already the result of the adjusting, after adjusting the investments, um, withdrawals, the net income or loss for the year and other adjustments from the beginning balance of owner's equity. So after presenting the owner's equity, the statement of financial position will look like this. So remember the equation, the basic account equation, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So this one must be equal. So this is the total assets, 777,800. And you add up the the total liabilities 567 plus um, owner's equity 210 so it will result to 777,800 same with the total assets so this one must be equal to the sum of the total liabilities and owner's equity so for your presentation of your statement of financial position if that's your final answer do not forget to double rule so this one, you have to put a double rule, that one, okay, so, so, in the statement of financial position, you may present it in a report form or in an account form. So the report form, it shows assets, accounts first, and then liabilities, and owner's equity accounts after. So it provides information in a vertical format, vertical format. One column that goes, so here, it should be in the vertical format. One column that goes the full width of the page. So you have here the assets, the liabilities and owner's equity. So that is a report form. Starts with assets, providing a total value of, at the end of the asset section, you also have liabilities, then equity. So the final line of the report providing the total combined value of liabilities and equity. So the one we have, we had presented, so it was a report form. It started with assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. So again, do not forget to have a double rule. So for account form, so it has two columns. Two columns. So that shows assets on the left side here and the liabilities and owner's equity on the right side. So just like the debit and credit balances of an account. So if you observe account form, so that is um, based on the accounting equation, assets, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. So this one, you start with the assets on the left side, then the liabilities and owner's equity on the right side so it provides information in an essentially horizontal format so the left column again list of companies assets and the final line on the left side of the sheet provides the total value of the assets and the column on the right list of both liabilities and equity so um, the final line on the right side of the total combined assets um, that is the total amount of liabilities and equity. So for ex example of this is shown in the next slide. This is the example of a account form. So it's in the horizontal format. So this left side compose your assets. The right side are your liabilities and equity. Thank you so much. See you in our next web class.